and good afternoon. Well, it's afternoon here. I don't know what time it is when you're watching. But uh, here we have a lovely slice, agate slice. And as you can see, there's a little bit of see-through there. It's got very uneven edges, so. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to do a netted bezel. So what I first need to do is get the frame length. So here's part of the frame. So I've got to there would be about the back. So I'm going to double that, which makes it right about there. No, nope, down a little further. Yeah, right about there. Yeah, I'm a good teacher for those of you who don't use rulers to measure. Rulers and I just don't get along. And it's because I have numerical dyslexia. And what does that mean? That means that I frequently reverse my numbers when I'm looking at them. Nothing I can do to change it. I've gotten a little bit better, but uh, I was originally planning on a field of, uh, working in the field of um, uh, accounting. Not such a great thing with numerical dyslexia. I tried managing a couple of stores and yeah, it worked out to be a really bad situation. Okay, so I am lining up with the bottom. And I'm taking my frame wire. And what that silver thing that I had just put up was is actually my pounding block for my hammer. You'll see why I need that in a second here. Okay, all the way down and then pinch. So that is the size of the outside this. So now I take my little pounding block and I hold the two pieces together and hold them down. And now I'm going to just flatten out. I'm not hitting hard or anything, but I want to flatten it and harden it. And that is what hitting does, flattening and hardening. And if you just do a whole bunch of little light taps, it does more hardening than it does flattening. Why is turning a bad thing? Because once you've got a flattened thing, you have a certain edge to it. It's like working with square wire. You need it to look a certain way. Okay, now, or at least I like it to look a certain way. I mean, if you decide you like it, don't care what it looks like in that spot, then that's fine with me. Why am I bringing it back? I don't know if you can see in the camera right there, but right there is not flattened like it should be not even with the rest of it. So there we do just a few little taps on there. Now I think we are even everywhere else. Don't mind if my voice is a little bit growly. I'm fighting off a cold. Doing pretty good though. I tend to keep my vitamins up and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Resize it, make sure it still fits okay. Now, I want this part to be a little bit more straight than it is. And then this part is going to bend more. Yeah, that's better. That's way better. It actually kind of fits on the edge. Alright, now you see those two pieces are uneven there? Well. I may or may not trim them later. I may just use this part to wrap around this part. It all depends on how I do the bail when I'm done. And I already pulled out approximately um, one and a half full arm spans or two single arm spans of, what is this, 30 gauge? Yeah, 30 gauge wire. Don't go anything lower than 30 gauge because, woo, I just dropped my frame. Yeah. Don't mind me, I'm a clumsy type. Anything lower than 30 gauge and it's not going to have the heft you need to um, keep stuff in. Now, I just did my normal thing of give it a couple of twists with the 
base with the main wire and with the little tail sticking out and then I start coiling my tail around until it's kind of little. I'm going to start right at the um, sorry I've got a bit of a tangle here getting distracted can't talk while I'm doing it okay so while I untangle my wire here so this is the only issue with taking it off of the spool but you can't do netting on the spool just like you can't do Viking knit on the spool and as long as you are gentle wire likes to move slowly you can't move wire quickly and expect it to work so first net side see we're going to be netting one side and then we're going to flip it over and net the other and both sets of netting sorry bump the tripod have to be up high enough to um hold over there so i'm the approximate spot where i want the frame to sit is approximately in the middle like uh, can we see it there it is approximately there so you want netting to go up and down at the same time but of course you have to do um, each step individually so first piece of netting so we want that I like to go pull it through instead of sewing it through Ooh, sorry Put my camera now I am going to do a fairly large net for this one because it has a very interesting pattern so that means I really don't want to cover the pattern up that's one of the reasons why I'm doing a netting bezel instead of any other kind of bezel I could do Okay, the next one I'm going to do slowly so you can see it better, but you want your netting loops to be approximately the same size, as close as possible to the same size. So, big loop, push underneath, pull through. Don't pull too hard. If you get a snag, you don't want to keep pulling. And if you pull really hard, you might catch and grab your frame. Now, whoops, get back here. Now, see how I'm pulling like that. And that action makes those loops approximately the same size. That one is a tiny bit too big. There we go. And again. And pull slowly, not too fast. Especially with this little stuff. This little stuff work hardens and gets brittle really quickly if I'm not careful. Come on. There we go. What I was doing there was just there was a bit of a point in that loop and I was just taking it out with my nail. Yeah, you can tell which nail I use the most for pushing wire, can't you? <laughs> Same on this hand. I'm ambidextrous, so I actually use both my hands for this. Um, I do write with my right hand, but that is because I've haven't really practiced writing with my left hand past finding out if I could do it. I can write legibly with my left hand. I just don't do it very often, so it's not that great. Oh, that one is now too small. So I'm going to do this trick of pushing the wire back down, making the bottom of the loop bigger, and then pulling up just a tiny bit, and that makes the loop a little bigger on the top. So back through again. Ah, oh, sorry. Keep smacking my camera. And there we go. And back through again. <clears throat> sorry. Yep, I'm Canadian. I say sorry for everything. Or at least that's the stereotype, right? <laughs> now, back through again. Ah, sorry. That's got to be hard on the eyes to watch. Okay. Now, 
So you can see I'm holding down these loops with this hand. So because if, if not, they'll slide back and forth all over the place while I'm doing this. So I always hold them down and I like to put just my finger like that and then this here and then just my thumbnail on the right on that join right there. If you can see where my thumbnail is going. And then that keeps my knitting from getting all twisted and weird as I'm working. Oh, believe me, that has happened so many times. I had to devise a way to not have that happen. Now, back down again. Oops, this one's too big. Going around a corner with netting is a bit of a pain. And we have a point again. If I can push it down with my nail, make it nice and rounded. Okay, well, that'll... I'll compensate for that on the second row. I'm probably only going to do two rows on the top and two rows on the bottom. And I will take a video of doing the top, but I'm not going to... Well, maybe I should do the bottom on the video too. It's going to make it a really long video because netting is a labor-intensive process. It's not that difficult to do once you have figured out the tricks that work for you. But it is difficult to do until then. Because you really do have to make sure your loops are a fairly consistent size or they don't really work right. And they look all twisted and funny when you're done your knit. Right now it just looks like loops, but you'll see what I mean about how it looks like a net. What the heck happened there? Give it a couple of little tweaks with my pliers. There we go. Now, as you get closer to here, it's going to be harder to keep your wire on the wire as you're doing the pull through technique like I do. So I may actually switch to the um, sewing with wire style technique once I get closer. No, that needs to be just a little bit smaller. Yep, yeah, I was right. Almost too small now. See, these ones are kind of bigger. These ones, uh, okay. That's better. Lots of fiddling and adjusting with netting. It is not one of those quick and easy ones. Well, it is one of those quick and easy ones once you get good at it. But practice makes perfect. I have been doing Strictly Wire pretty much for about three years straight now. And my goal has been to produce one piece a day. How do you get good quick volume? You keep making. You keep making mistakes and learning from them. That is how you get good quick. And quick is a relative term. There, I don't think there's any way, barring massive amounts of natural talent, to get really good. Whoa, you see that? It just about slipped off the end there. Okay, I'm going to have to hold that one down too, apparently. Okay, um... Barring massive amounts of natural talent, getting quick, good, getting good quick, pardon me while I get my words mixed, um, doesn't happen. You have to practice. That's the same in music, it's the same in sports, it's the same in pretty much any field. To get good, you have to practice. And I'm getting tangle of wire here going on. And you may notice that I really only pull with like the first couple of inches of the wire. That's because pulling work hardens. Turning work hardens. Everything work hardens your wire. And if you are not careful, yeah this is going to need the sewing part now. I'm not going to be able to do just the pull through like I like to do. If you're not careful with your wire, you will snap it. 
And believe you me, it is a pain in the patootie to snap something at like this stage when I've already gone all the way around. I have had to take things apart and redo them because I work hard in my wire and I wasn't paying attention and I snapped it in the middle of a weave. It's like, ah, dude, come on now. But that's okay. I recovered. And one more of the resilient, or resilient, huh? I am resilient, yes. One more of the sewing technique. And, oh, see, it is trying to, yeah, it did too. I'm going to do the pull through, but I'm going to hold on to the end while I do the pull through. And I use all of my fingers when I am wiring, weaving, and I hit the camera again, sorry. Why do I use all of my fingers? Because this is kind of an all of my fingers kind of job. Now, what am I doing here? This is deciding the spacing of the frame. Because now is when I decide how far apart the frame bail wires need to be. And it's about there. This is important because this is the next level I'm working on now. In some times I take this and I would do the bale itself from this, but I'm not because I'm just going to do a, um, what would you call it, similar to a coil bale where I'm not going to weave the bale, I'm just going to coil it around a couple times or even I might make a twist to bale, I haven't decided yet. But once you get to this point, you the, your only option is the sewing action. So, I don't know if you saw what I just did there, but sorry, I'm kind of paying attention to what I'm doing and not talking about it. This is why I don't always do a bunch of tutorials all the time, because I may be quick and I may be good, but talking while I'm working is a completely different story. <laughs> Okay, this is a common problem with netting. It wants to stay in that big loop. So what I have to do is I have to pull on the side that will make the big loop smaller while not pulling too tight. Okay. I'm just gradually pulling, ooh, pulling it down. It's trying to get stuck on these things. Now, it doesn't really want to go. It wants to just tighten up the loop right here. It wants to tighten up that loop and not that part. So I am spending my time adjusting it in small, slow movements so that because if you move too fast with wire, you will not get the result you are looking for. Come on! Ugh. Just looks like a giant jumble right now. But believe me, it'll look good in a sec here. You know what I think happened? I think I had a loop go off of that. But that's okay. I will keep adjusting. And that one, it's a good thing this is a back. <laughs> that doesn't look very good at all. What is going on here? Is it like twisted or something? It shouldn't be twisted. I did it the way I normally do it. And now I just pulled too hard on that. Recoil it back up a tiny bit. Okay, let's redo this one. Let me 
maybe I can save it. Yeah, I'm going to have to do it like this and redo it open like that. pull through the big part. And then I'm just going to go and cheat and go around like that to make the little grabbing loop pull through the big part again. That's not how you're supposed to do it, but it looks like that's how that particular piece is working. It's not going to be a clean net. Not like I like, but that's okay. Now, come on. There we go going through and then taking that little bit and pulling up. And as you can see it's trying to go beside the piece but I'm not letting it. Every time it tries to curl up I uncurl it. There's some lovely marked wire now from trying to fix from before. And we have this little hickey here. Can't pull too hard or I'm going to snap the wire. Tighten up that little loop a little bit. And then we go back to... Oh boy. Come on. There we go. Got the end again. I'm still holding down the coils as I go. See what I mean about ambidextrous? I just switched from right hand to left hand. Uh, I'm sorry if that doesn't work for you. You could hold it this way and continue going like you were before by flipping it over. Um, I don't need to do that because my hands work both directions with both hands. And through and up. And that creates the loop and that is too small. <laughs> I'm just turning it with my pliers a little bit so I can pull it out, grabbing it with my nail. That's still too small. You see that? Turn it out just a little bit more. And what's going on here? Ah, there we go. That's the right size. And uh, what I was doing there is I was pulling my wire backwards to get to the end of it. I have nice long arms, so that works well for me. Ooh, now my wire is trying to coil around the tripod when I let go. Lovely. Yeah, this wonderful little tangle of wire. And slowly pull it down until it gets to where you want it to be. Back again. Oops, dropped it. Sorry. Oh, come on. And got it. In and up and grab. little bit tighter but not too much. See that's a weird looking one which means that I gotta make this one still even just a tiny bit more tighter. There we go. Find the end of the wire. Through and up and then slowly 
I don't know if you saw those coils that were forming as I was pulling, but um, if I had been pulling fast, those things would have most definitely become kinks. Speaking of kinks, I have one there and one there. So even pulling slowly, you get kinks, but it's much worse when you do it fast. Usually because you can't even tell it hasn't happened, or you can't even tell it's happened until after it's happened when you're going fast. Okay, what's going on here? I didn't go around there twice. Oh, it twisted. Uh-huh. And a little bit more tight. Oh, my nail is dirty. Yeah. Cleaned them before I got ready to do the video, but apparently I missed something. And I have to compensate for those little kinks now. And pull that tight. That's still surviving, right? Now that looks like that's still surviving. And find the end. At two arm spans is going to do around like, or two single arm spans, not both of my arms wide, is going to do around twice for sure with netting, but I'm probably going to have to cut and attach some more for the top. And I am working with kinky wire. So, kinky wire doesn't want to do what it's told. Yeah, I could make some interesting comments with that one, but I will spare the YouTube viewers my really interesting sense of humor with that one. And here we go. Come on. There we go. And find the end again. Back through. And oops. Haha, <laughs> I pulled it out. I love it when you do that. Pull slowly. And I'm going to stop this now. And that is the basic. That's the second level. That's the thing. I'm, my phone's going to cut it off in a second anyways. But um, I'll come back when I've got the bezel all the way up to here. And I will show you how I do the top layer. Okay.